You're on. Uh, Thursday, uh, March 8th, 2018 for the okay. Deep Archives. Okay. This is day five. Yep. You want to explain where we're at here in Toronto? Yeah, we're downtown Toronto. Uh, we're uh, Right next to Nathan Phillips Square. Uh, Bay and Queen. At the old city hall, which is now the uh, city uh, courthouse. Trans people welcome here. Elder McLeod. Hi. Yar, ER, how you ER. doing, sister? Good. You want to explain where we're at and? Uh, yeah, we're at 60 uh, Queen Street uh, at the, at the old city hall, and uh, we're at uh, we're at uh, <laughs> yeah, the Eagle. Sorry, an eagle. Sorry, an eagle, eagle camp. camp. Yes. And this is the fourth one. There's one in uh, Winnipeg, Regina, and Calgary. Yes. And explain the the case of uh, Tina Fontaine and why we're here. Well, uh, well, she was abused by her foster father. Well, she was murdered in Winnipeg by uh, Raymond Cormier. She was 15. Yes. And he, she was, and he got acquitted. Oh. Even though he admitted to killing her. Yes, he got acquitted. Yeah. And it's the same uh, with the other uh, boy. I, I heard he was shooting. Yeah, Bushy. Yes, yes. And uh, I think those uh, two incidents just should have never been acquitted. I think, uh, you know, like, it's unfairness because they were native youth. And anybody that, that kills a child or a youth should do time. They shouldn't be acquitted. 
doesn't matter what minority they are, but it seemed like, you know, that was a, it could have been a racial, uh, you know, racial thing. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, or they didn't want to, uh, you know, deal with it. I, I don't think they even really uh, investigated the whole thing, you know. Mm -hmm. or, or they went on theory rather than evidence. Well, with Tina Fontaine, Raymond Cormier admitted it. Uh, to killing her and dumping her body in the Red River and uh, in Winnipeg, and uh, that was uh, two undercover officers and with mics. And uh, in the court trial, uh, it was inadmissible, uh, and uh, it's a travesty of justice. Yes, it is. The Canadian court system, colonial court system. Yes, it should have never happened. It should have never happened. Uh, them to get acquitted, especially with him mm -hmm. being acquitted, and, uh, they should have. Uh, he, he should have been fried, tried as guilty, mm -hmm. and did all that time, you know, for taking her life. Yeah, but that's the Canadian law system for you. Yeah, and that's the reason we're here today. And you to are Elder them. McLeod. Yes. Hashtag Elder McLeod. Yes. <laughs> Would you like to say something? Um, okay. Are you you want to tell people you, um, we're live? You want to oh, tell people live? your okay. name? Okay, well that's crazy. Live to the world! <laughs> um, I think it, it sets the precedence for the Canadian courts uh, to abuse natives further. Uh, people are, are looking at um, a very uh, hard climb against like racism and we are in the midst of it right now again. Um, we're not we're not uh, getting any further ahead than we were because nobody's acknowledging us as native. Um, systemic racism is, is rampant in schools, everything. Um, government government is uh, quick to uh, disregard our needs and our concerns. Mm -hmm. um, the youth are committing suicide in like large, disproportionate numbers in the north and across mm -hmm. Canada. Um, I lost a brother. Uh, 2006 for suicide. I lost another brother. He froze to death on the reserve. Uh, I lost my other brother recently, like last year, to drinking. So he, was, he was on. Uh, he was homeless. Um, he had. Uh, he finally got housed the year, be like year before. Um, and then he was. He got sick. So you know, I, I watched uh, many extremes. Um, I have uh, cousins that were murdered. Um, I found out recently that my grandmother was murdered. Um, in international calls and my sister she was only uh, she was only a baby in diapers I don't know exactly how old she was and um, yeah she got murdered and she was uh, um, murdered murdered missing women uh, the case was I don't know if it was solved I don't know much about it but I just know that she was uh, um, it would have wiped out generations you know like I That's have so three generations under me my myself my girls and my grandkids and you know that would have that would have been horrible. You know, like I think about all the different different uh, things that happened. You know, like to all these women. I had cousins murdered, missing women. Um, yeah, so it's like it's, it's awful. You know, like it's, it shouldn't be happening, and the courts are just you know running us over. And you know, there's a lot of racism with the police on the street, and yep. they get harassed. And now that they now that they have like free reign to do this, and you know, it's like it's gonna happen more, and they need to stop and just stop it. You know, they need to just stop doing what they're doing and stop, you know, being racist or whatever it is that they think that they're doing, you know, like, but we're oppressed. Mm -hmm. We're being oppressed and we're being told that we are not important. We're not important to the economy. We're not important to society. And Because the numbers in Canada for missing and murdered Native women and girls is usually six or seven times more than the national average uh, and it's so sad in the case of Tina Fontaine where even though they, they caught her murderer he got off and even though he admitted you know how more blatant can you get that he admitted to killing her on tape and uh, that wasn't even admissible I mean yeah, it's stories, a vicious colonial cycle the stories I've heard um, with my brother just alone out in the west he was uh, arrested, taken away um, out into the out of the city limits um, in the winter. There was a big snowstorm, and he was uh, let go. 
without no coat and no shoes, and he was uh, that, that, happened, Party RCMP. that happened twice. Um, the first time it happened, um, he told me about uh, he told me about this. Uh, he said, "Oh no!" He goes, "I'm up Chick Creek." <laughs> He knew it right away, and then, like, within a minute or two, he said some guy came, picked him up, and, you know, gave him a ride back into the city, seeing what happened, but this was never reported. He was, and this was probably RCMP, because I've heard many, many stories of yeah. RCMP doing and that in, in the, the prairies. And in the city here, there was uh, incidents where I, I, I met all kinds of natives getting beat up. They were black and blue. My brother, Jace, was beat up one day. I didn't even recognize him. Oh, my God. I went into work to see him, and he was, like, he was blue, and he goes, no, and I, I walked right by him, and then I heard his voice, and I looked, and I'm like, oh, my God. His head was black. It was black with bruises. And who did that? He said 14 Division. So this was going back a few years. Um, they knew my brother quite well. They uh, knew all the all the boys quite well. And I, I know quite a few that got beaten by the different police branches and stuff. And, you know, it's like they target. You know, they target you. And, you know, the police have jurisdiction. So... <laughs> mm-hmm. um, who are we to say? You know, it's our land, but you know they, <laughs> they're running the show. Yeah, the colonial show. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, it's pretty it. sad. It is. And this on this day, March is International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day. Thank you. <laughs> and what First Nations are you from? Originally from Saint River. Um, um, what territory is that? Uh, Treaty Three, northwest of Thunder Bay, about three hours. Is that Cree or Ojibwe? Uh, Saint, Saint River is Ojibwe. Uh, my dad was from Kuchiching Reserve, Treaty mm-hmm. Three. Kuchiching, I have always loved that word. Me too. <laughs> and you can sing it, Kuchiching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm pretty busy with business and, and trying to get my my business off the ground. We're looking at working with youth. Um, developing an arts collective, and we are working on some projects right now together to uh, to make, create awareness. And uh, it's uh, it's a new new operation, so it's not something that it's it's really grassroots right now. It's not funded, and uh, we're uh, working on bigger issues and problems. We want to we want to look at uh, solutions to some of these issues. Alrighty, and what's your name? Melanie. Melanie Yar. I like to say Yar a lot. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Thunder Bay. Now that's one of the epicenters of uh, missing and murdered uh, Native women and girls. You know. Yes. There's the Highway of Tears in BC, and. Yep. Um, you know. I have quite a few uh, relatives up in Thunder Bay area. Um, one of my cousins was murdered in the '90s. I didn't know her, but I, I heard about it. Um, and then when I moved up there, I lived up there for maybe a year at a time. I tried to move up there and live, but. The racism was really rampant um, in all systems. Uh, children's Aid, they you know made false accusations and called Children's Aid on me for really nothing. And uh, I was fired on my first day of work. Third, my third day, sorry, it was my training. Uh, they, I pulled out my status card and showed them I had a status card because I knew what a status card was. Like, dumb. <laughs> I don't know what they thought I was because I was really dark. I had my hair up in a ponytail and I was like, I must have looked like, you know, I was like really, really dark from the sun. And... Uh, yeah, they must not have realized that I was native. And when she did, she went upstairs to the office, the lady that was training me, and uh, the manager came down and said, we won't be needing you no more, you're too slow. And I walked out of there with my, my mouth open. I could not believe, you know, that this was still going on. And, you know, like, it, it's uh, it's more prevalent up in the north. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, and, the, you know, it's legendary how complacent the Thunder Bay police are to all this. It, it's just... It just epidemic and it shouldn't be well fighting people in the river yeah that's that's uh, crazy it's like that's that sounds like serial killer stuff there because it happens so often mm-hmm. but given the nature of the way that people are being taken away uh, being like you know taken out and dropped off in the middle of nowhere and you know all these different scenarios it, it kind of leads me to believe that there's you know more to uh, more to it than you know what we know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's sad. That's all I could say. And, you know, uh, what's the government doing about it? Okay, they got the inquiry. That well, doesn't really do much. Exactly. They, they, you know, it's like even throwing money at us isn't going to do much. It's like uh, they have to look into their own systems. Exactly. You know, I feel like the only way that this is going to be resolved is if they dismantle these systems and people have to really stand up and, you know, wake up, understand issues and, you know, just stop making it, like, you know, so there's, you know, people are better than everyone, 1%, you know, all this other stuff with money and, you know, we're not going to have money, you know, soon. There's going to be uh, 
it's going to be a breakdown because there's uh, no clean drinking water and there's no, uh, you know, we have nothing to offer these kids, you know, nothing to offer our next generations. Mm -hmm. The pollution is bad, you know, so it's going to break down. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Uh, the state of worldwide affairs and, you know, it's, it's almost like the capitalism of genocide. It is. You know, food prices through the roof. You can't even rent anything is down. Bad. The what? Unless it's bad. Right? Yes. Places is bad. They look you up and down, and they, you know, like I, I see the look. I know the look, and I know how it is to be, you know, to be uh, noticed as native. You know, mm -hmm. I, I've been, you know, I get really dirty looks sometimes. That's sad. In this day and age. I used to it. Oh, but you shouldn't. <laughs> I, I understand. You know. It's I used to it. I uh, set up my art on the street. I sell my art everywhere. You know, like I, I go to shows. I go all over the place. The shows are good. Mm -hmm. But setting my art up on the street, I, I get, you know, good and bad, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I see it every day. You know, whether it's homelessness or whether it's people that are, you know, that are just, you know, walking by and, mm -hmm. you know, the looks. And, yeah, and then, there's, then there's some nice people. They want to know what's going on, you know, and they want to talk to you about these issues. Mm -hmm. Like I've had uh, people from the UN come and talk to me. And uh, ask me like you know what I would like to bring back to the, what, the, what I would like them to bring back. Mm -hmm. And I told them I said, uh, I said we need to give back. You know we need to start working with the youth and helping them. You know? Yeah. To take care of the climate, <laughs> the world. You know they take care of Mother Earth. That's what we need. Honor the trees. Give back the lands. Yeah. You know. To that point now. What art do you do? Uh, painting, sculpting? Um, I do painting. I can carve. Um, I can do jewelry. Um, I, I'm learning jewelry. It's it's new. Um, I can do a lot of beadwork, earrings, jewelry, wood beads, um, leather work. Um, yeah, I do dream catchers and stuff. Yeah, I'm all over the place. Mm -hmm. People see me everywhere. Yar, and you're here at the Tina Fontaine Soaring Eagle Camp. Yeah. They asked me to come out, so I'm here. Come check it out. Nice. Cold as it is, it's nice out. You know, it's a nice day to be out. No snow. Hey, I'm Bruce. Break a look, as the Scots say. Oh, it's been all over here. They're having a power, I I'm guess. Kidding. Let's go over there. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if they want to be uh, live streamed. You're gonna have to ask them. <laughs> Maybe you can ask. Live stream. <laughs> We're live to the world. Hi world! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kareem? Can we do an interview? Hi. So you're the organizer? Yes, I am. Uh, let's go over here so that. So this is day five. Uh, yeah. Talk about yeah. the genesis of this Soaring Eagle Camp, number four. Right, okay, so how it started and uh, so. Yeah, this is the fourth one. I've been in a lot of contact with people from the other camps. Mm -hmm. And uh, right after... Um, explain the other camps. Um, so the other camps, so Darla Contoa started um, in Winnipeg on uh, February 22nd. Um, not long after all this had happened, they had opened up the Winnipeg camp and uh, slept outside and stayed camped outside of the uh, Manitoba legislator. And then a few days later, a man in Calgary, um, he camped outside uh, the Calgary courthouse. And then uh, I think Rachel Dubois and a few others, uh, and they've reached out to me, are in Regina right now. And uh, they're camped out as well, and they're prepared to stay. So then, when I saw all this happening, I, I contacted Darla and said, "Would it be okay with you? Like, it respects you. If I, if you, would you have a problem? If I opened it up and also named it like an extension, Soaring Eagles Camp." And Darla said, "That's fine. Make, make it the same name. You know, do good. Hope you the best. Hope, hope that you're well." So we did that, and, I, and it took me about five days to plan that. I wanted to make sure I had the supplies, the support, the youth, because I'm only 23 years old. I'm a youth. I've never organized anything like this before. Um, I've never been a leader of anything before, so I didn't even know if it was something that I physically could do or get supplies or have support for but um i reached out to the indigenous youth movement i don't know more and a few organizations and um you know and those people have had great contacts and so and, and then we also you know got a little bit of publicity because people know about soaring eagles camp how this has been happening in canada so um so i'm i'm, I'm really surprised about all the um the support that we've been getting like the food donations people are coming by every 20 minutes dropping off food dropping off coffee and hot chocolate and saying what can we do to help and um what kind of people are asking requests for what food would you like do you want me to come bring in bannock tomorrow or would you like me to cook <gasps> breakfast bannock. 
right? Right? We've had like multiple people bring Vanek and bologna and like some real traditional dish food. Colonized dish food. But yeah, and uh, you know, someone came last night and said they're going to make us a big breakfast, if not this morning, then tomorrow morning. So they should be here tomorrow morning. We're going to have a big home cooked breakfast. And we've been getting a lot of support. It's been it's been really overwhelming, and I didn't I really didn't think that it was going to be you know because as I was preparing for this, I brought some books with me. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be bored. I'm going to be sitting all day. I've never attended an Occupy before, or, or not, but any any type of sitting occupation, or, yeah. occupation, anything like this. And um, I'd never done anything like this before, so I didn't realize that it was going to be go go go. And which I'm fine with, and I'm prepared to do that, and I'm willing to be here every single day, and I don't really care how long. Um, so and it's been really on my feet, and I'm, and I'm pleasantly surprised with you know how much people care, how much people off the street. This is why we chose Old City Hall, because it's right here. People are walking by, we have beautiful flags, people are seeing something that's going on, we usually have drumming and singing, and that also attracts people to come in and be like, what's going on over there? And uh, you can't miss it, right? Even when I come back from Timbs, it looks beautiful, it's big, it's amazing. So many people have brought flags, someone drew that painting, oh, and it's amazing. So, uh, Queen and Bay. Yeah, Queen of Aid. So people come up, and uh, we just had a youth from high school make some brochures to hand out to people. So, because um, that's kind of time consuming for people to come up off the street who have no idea what's happening, and they're like, "Can you explain to me?" So then you have to explain the same thing all day, every day. So now we have brochures that we can start handing out to people. And we're gonna try and build this as much as we can. Um, get to brochures, or maybe go to organizations and put up bulletins or, or stickers or whatever. So um, we're gonna do this for as long as we can and be here. You're, you're leaving? Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, yeah, and so we've been here and we've been fine. It's been a little chilly, but nothing, nothing. We're alive. Right? Spring is in around the corner. Exactly. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Now explain the Tina Fontaine case for the worldwide audience that doesn't know. Right. So um, Tina Fontaine was a 15-year-old youth who was murdered. Um, okay, let me rephrase this. Who? Yeah, who was murdered? And in, Winnipeg. in Winnipeg, gruesomely, uh, uh, yeah, you know, wrapped in a blanket and thrown in the lake. 15 years old, was in child care uh, system, legally was in child care system, um, was put up in a hotel for the night, and then they went missing. Um, so the person who um, was being charged for this murder got off with not guilty. Raymond Cormier. Right, yeah, and a lot of people um, have been really, really upset by that, like it struck a nerve. Um, Even though he admitted. Yeah, there was recordings. There was a lot of recordings, things, and they were really suspected. It was the exact same thing with Gerald Stanley, with Colton Bushi, where that non-guilty verdict happened. In Saskatchewan, before. yeah. In Saskatchewan. It was the exact same feeling, and there was, there was, uh, there, there were two, it happened so close together, right? It was uh, within two weeks. And so then I think that that's why people were like, listen, we had two youth and two acquittals within such a short amount of time to our youth. So that's why the youth started talking. The youth got together and people were like, we need to do something more. We, uh, some people were talking about doing a walk from here to the parliament, um, like a long walk that we can have people come in for donations. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, um, and then that's when, um, that's when I thought about Darla that was doing the camp and I was like, okay, like, we gotta make this happen. We gotta do it. Like, that's great. That's what we're gonna do. And so that's what we did and we, we've done it. And a lot of, um, a lot of people, um, you know, we're saying, yeah, like, come out and support. This will be great. Like, good, good. Like, in the talks about it for the days leading up. But then, you know, now that it's happening, a lot of people are really, uh, they don't want to brave the cold or they don't want to spend the night and uh, and things like that. So, um, but then we, got a, a, we have a solid group of us that are, are prepared and willing to stay um, overnight and to stay as long as we can. And what First Nations are you? I'm Ojibwe. From where? I'm from Rocky Bay. And I'm, I'm almost my, um, Where's my Rocky Bay? It's an hour north of Thunder Bay, I believe. So that's where um, I've only been to Rocky Bay a few times. My dad, um, he's uh, all his family's from there. My dad's the chief of Rocky Bay right now. Um, so I have good connection with there. But uh, right, so I'm from Thunder Bay. Been to Rocky Bay. That's my reserve. But then I'm I'm here now. And uh, but my dad, that's where he's there constantly and very very busy. But uh, yeah, hopefully he'll come down here and show us some support. Yeah. Uh, Gary. No, uh, focus on somewhere else for a bit. I gotta talk. Okay. Yar. I don't want to be a monster. I know. Okay, so, uh, hi, my name is B. Shanger, Yar. Uh, I'm gonna take a little break and then uh, I'll be uh, doing lots and lots of live stream from this The Soaring Eagle camp here in Toronto. And food donations, if you're here at, uh, we're at Queen of Bay, Old City Hall, next to Nathan Cove.